Welcome to the installation video of Hoymiles HMS 2000 dw 4 t This series of videos consists of five chapters. Preparation. AC trunk cable pre-installation. Microinverter installation. Network configuration and plant creation. The installation tutorial applies to the following microinverter models. You can refer to the user manual if you need more information. Please note that only those who have been properly trained or who demonstrate relevant skills can install and maintain this microinverter under instructions. Now, let's take a look at the tools that we are going to use. For installation tools, we need large torque, wrench, large slotted screwdriver, small slotted screwdriver, large Phillips screwdriver, small Phillips screwdriver, steel tape, crimping pliers, small wrench, wire stripper, and diagonal pliers. For personal protection equipment, we need helmets, gloves, overalls, and safety ropes. As for other auxiliary tools, we need M for screws, M8 screws, grounding accessories, tie wraps, grounding cable, 10 a WGAC trunk cable, AC and cable. We also need microinverter accessories including AC trunk end cap, AC trunk port cap, AC trunk port disconnect tool, AC trunk connector unlock tool and DC extension cable, and most importantly, HMS 2000 dw 4 t Open the microinverter package. We can see a parameter label in the middle part and a serial number label on the left. There is a Wi-Fi wireless terminal on the upper left corner, jacks on the lower left and lower right corners as DC connection, an outlet wire on the upper right corner as an AC connector, and a screw hole in the middle of the handle as a grounding hole. Now, we are ready to start the pre-installation of the AC trunk cable. First, plan and build the AC trunk cable. Determine how many microinverters you plan to install on each AC branch and prepare AC trunk connectors accordingly. The number of connectors depends on the design. Second, Unlock the connector's upper cover with AC trunk connector unlock tool. Third, loosen the three screws with the screwdriver. Untighten the cap and remove the cable. The fourth step is to insert the AC trunk end cap. Screw the cap back to port and then tighten the cap. Then use a wrench to tighten the cap. Please note that the torque is 4.0 plus or minus 0.5 newton meter. Please do not exceed the torque in case of any damage to the AC mains connector. And last, plug the upper cover back to the trunk connector. If you hear a click, it means the connector is ready. Then we can start to install the AC and cable. The first step is to unlock the port upper cover. Second, loosen the screws with the screwdriver and remove the extra cable. Third, insert the cable into the cap in a way that the L, N and P are in corresponding slots. Then use a screwdriver to fix the prepared AC truck cable to the connector and use a wrench to tighten the cap. Finally, plug the upper cover back into the trunk connector to complete the AC and cable installation. Repeat the above steps to make all the AC trunk cables you need. Now, we come to the installation of the microinverter. Before the installation begins, please determine and mark the appropriate installation location of the microinverter according to the drawing. First, fix the screws at the predetermined place on the rail. Hang the microinverter onto the screws, and then tighten the screws. Please note that the parameter label side of the microinverter should face the panel. Second, lay out the cable on the rail. Place the connector next to the planned installation location of the microinverter, and then fix the cable with tie wraps. Third, plug the AC sub connector of the microinverter into the AC trunk connector until you hear the click. Fourth. Route a continuous grounding cable through grounding brackets of each microinverter to the AC grounding electrode that conforms with local regulations. 
Fifth, plug the AC trunk port cap in any vacant AC trunk port to make it water and dust proof. Sixth, peel the removable serial number label from each microinverter and affix it to the corresponding location on the installation map. The next step is to connect PV modules. Please determine whether the DC extension cable is required based on your situation. In our case, extension cables are needed for some modules, so we have to move the PV modules onto the track. Use the DC extension to connect to the PV modules, then connect the microinverter with DC extension cables. and fix the cable with tie wraps. Finally, move the PV modules above the microinverter and fix them. Repeat the above operation until all PV modules are connected. Now, we need to connect the AC end cable to the distribution box. Please note that the grid connection and system energizing shall be operated by professionals after obtaining the permit from the grid operator. Next connect the distribution box to the local grid to complete the microinverter installation. Don't forget to go through the checklist to see whether the installation is complete. Next is the setup process for connecting the microinverter to the network via the S-Miles installer app. Before start, please update your S-Miles installer app to the latest version. Type in the username and password. Click Login and you will be directed to the Plants page. Click the O and M icon at the bottom of the page, and then click the Network Configuration. Then the app will alert you that Wi-Fi is not connected. Click Confirm to redirect to the WLAN page. On the WLAN settings, select and connect to the microinverter's hotspot. Return to the O and M screen and click Network Config icon. On the Wi-Fi settings, Manually input the name and password of the Wi-Fi to be connected, and then click the Send to DTU button. The network configuration takes about one minute to complete. Please wait patiently. Now, we're going to start plant creation. Let's go back to the Plants page. Click plus sign on the upper left and start building your plant. First, you need to fill in the name of your plant and other basic information. Please avoid duplicate plant names, then select the plant type and enter the capacity of your system. Please note that the plant type cannot be changed once it is created, so please select one that suits your installation situation and the installed capacity. Next, select your time zone. Please make sure you select the right time zone because a wrong one will affect the display of your daily power generation. Then select the area where your power plant is located. The map will automatically locate your current area. You can locate the area either by dragging and zooming the map with gestures, or by manually entering detailed address information. Then choose your region. You can upload a picture of your plant if you want to add the cover. Click Next. Go to the Owner Information page. Click the icon in the upper right corner to add an account. In this step, you need to set up a login account, password, username, and fill in email and phone information, then click save. And you can see the owner information you have added. Then click next to add devices and set layouts. Click edit you. The serial number can be entered manually or added by scanning the barcode. After the completion of filling in DTU serial number, the microinverter serial number will be automatically imported. Then click the Finish button below. Please note that if you want to add more DTU, just click Add DTU, fill in all required information, and then click Next to complete this step. Then we can move on to lay out your plant. You can change the array name, Fill in the azimuth and inclination of your modules and then select the layout pattern. Click Save and enter the PV module layout interface. Adjust your modules according to the actual installation and click Next when the layout is complete. Upload the installation map of the power plant or you can also directly click Next to start more settings of the power station. 
Fill in the rest of information about the plant. You can choose whether or not to enable the relevant options to allow the owner to view the layout and networking, and then click Finish. Now, your power plant is turned on and starting. You can see the detailed operation status of the microinverters in the power plant you have just created, and control the microinverters in a remote and timely manner. That's all about this video. Thank you for watching.